G'day Internet, welcome back to another video. This here is my Apple IIc, which I'm sure you've seen at least a couple of times before on the channel. Uh, and of all the Apple IIs, it is my favourite. Look, I know things like the 2E are more expandable. Uh, the 2GS, which I've got one up there somewhere, uh, does have all the bells and whistles. But for some reason, it is the 2C that I like the most. The biggest problem with the 2C, for me at least, is booting from an external device, um, be it uh, a floppy EMU or another disk drive or whatever it happens to be. Now, the reason for that is, is that the standard ROM, for instance, dictates you will boot from drive one and that is it. Now, there is the ROM for X, so before you start hammering away in the comments, this actually does have that which you can drop into a boot menu and say boot from the external drive. The problem with that is that it's simply, the software is hard coded simply to boot from the internal drive and the internal drive only. Let me show you. Right, Apple IIc, known working external disk drive, uh, powered it on, uh, nothing in the internal drive, so no bootable device. Let's drop the disk into the external drive and boot into ROM 4X, which is closed Apple control reset. Seven to boot the external drive. And that's as far as it gets. The external drive at the moment is just hammering home and it will sit there and do nothing. So I hummed and hard about this and what I was actually going to do about it. And I did try some DIY uh, things that I found on the internet and none of them seemed to work. So in the end, I uh, went and purchased the logical thing, which is the big mess of wires 2C drive switcher. So let's take a look at it and stick it in this machine. So the 2C drive switcher is a pretty simple device. There's two halves uh, and a small cable. Come on. Right. Part of it goes inside and part of it goes outside. And essentially all it's doing is it's intercepting some of the drive select signals uh, and switching them around. It does have a couple of options for dual internal, uh, sorry, dual external and then flipping the internal and external. Uh, and because me being me, when you buy it, that's what basically hangs out the back of the computer. So I designed a 3D case. Now this is an early prototype. Hopefully by the time this video goes live, uh, I'll have a link to the case in Thingiverse. So, on Thingiverse, uh, let's put this in the Apple IIc. Right, my Apple IIc, some swearing and the cover off. And we're gonna turn our attention to the back of the machine just here. So this is the internal floppy drive. This is its little cable. And it's not that difficult, basically unplug that, take the internal portion uh, from the drive switcher and plug it into the port, plug the cable back into it. Come on, line up. Right, that's that bit done. Then we have our little, which is basically just a DuPont cable, um, and the pins on the side here are labeled one and two. So I'm gonna put red on one, which becomes important later on. Then in the process of putting the cover back on, you simply need to be able to feed this through like that. Uh, and then we'll take a look at the external part of it. Right, with everything back together, simply plug the cable into the back here. That plugs into there, and you're good to go. Now, all my external Apple II drives use the DB connector, and you probably notice on the switcher, uh, it uses a 20 pin uh, IDC connector. So right now, I can't actually demonstrate this, the machine booting up off this particular drive. But what I do have is a modern disk drive emulator. Well, it's actually not that uh, modern. It's actually really old design that's still kind of kicking around on the internet. So that modern storage device is the S-Disk 2. Now before you start again hammering away at the comments and going why didn't you get a floppy EMU, 
the simple fact is, is this cost me about $30 in parts. Uh, I got the uh, PCB from a mate of mine, uh, ordered most of the parts from DigiKey and a few odds and ends from Jcar, and I made this. Uh, and how did I make it? Well, let's take a look. Right, so here is the PCB uh, for the S-Disc 2, uh, which I got from David Mutimer, who's the same guy I got my booty card from. Uh, and this is what we're going to build. So the first couple of bits I'm gonna do, there is two SMD components on this. One is the SD card reader, and the other one is a component on the back. Uh, and that's where I'm going to start because I'm not great at SMD soldering. So if I'm going to screw anything up, I might as well screw it up at the beginning. Uh, and as opposed to after I've got everything else done. So let's start there. So given my trepidation of SMD soldering, uh, I'm going to start with some flux and pre-tin these pads. Okay, let me get the SD card reader. Now, if I've got this right, this should, oops, I missed a pad. This should sit here. And these two pads here are basically more for strength than anything else. So, whilst keeping the main pins aligned, I'm going to try and solder in the ones at the back to try and hold everything uh, in place. All right, that feels sturdy, and so I should now be able to solder down the actual pads. Yeah, I'm not overly happy with a lot of those, so I'm going to try a little bit more solder. And see if I make a big mess of it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. All right, I'm kind of happy with that. So next is what I believe is a power regulator of some description that goes on the back here. Uh, where is it here? And that should go there like that. So I'm gonna do the same thing again, a bunch of flux. in the pads yeah that looks all right not bad for amateur hour so in the process of ordering all the parts for this, there's one bit I forgot to order, and that was the resistor array, which goes along here. Now, JCAR up the road, unfortunately, don't sell resistor arrays, which I thought was a little strange. So we're gonna have to make, I'm gonna have to make my own. So we need eight 10K resistors. And so they all go in along these pins here and then you've got a common one at the end. Uh, so I'm going to start with the first one just here uh, and go from there. And for this, I think I'm gonna put it in my PCB mount.
Well, that's one. Seven more to go. Right, I'm not going to tell you that's the prettiest resistor array ever created, but it's functional. Right, we've got a bunch of other various little capacitors and resistors to go on, so how about I do those? Okay, that's those taken care of. I'm guessing this was designed for quarter watt uh, resistors and I've got half watt, um, but they kind of fit. Uh, I might, I think I might put the crystal in next. Uh, as long as I can work out which way around it goes. Okay, it goes that way, according to photos. Uh, right, next I think I'm going to drop in the socket for the 74 series uh, IC that needs to go in there. Looks pretty good. Uh, what next? I think the big IC socket, um, wherever it is, for the Atmega. Is that going to fit in past my clamp? It is, and the clamp's even going to hold it in place. Nice. Okay, there's our two IC sockets in. What do I want to do next? Uh, I think I'm going to put in the three switches. Now, because I intend to build a case for this, uh, and even once the LCD's on, okay, so the buttons I should be using, as micro switches I should be using are these, right? Just your regular three mil. Um, I was going to try and get some six mil ones, but JK was out. Um, so for the hell of it, I'm going to try these big buggers. Uh, these are actually six pin, but the middle pins here uh, are actually just for the illumination. Now, this doesn't support illumination, so I'm simply going to snip out this center pin uh, and solder these in. Okay, that's also the LED in. Uh, we've got a variable resistor that needs to go in here. Okay, the last two main components that need to go on this is uh, the pin headers for the LCD uh, and the 20 pin connector that goes on the end here. So I'm going to do the headers. Well, wow, that ended up really straight the first time. Right, and now we've got the 20 pin cable connector which goes here. And all the photos I've seen of this device, it's you wanna solder it down as flush as you possibly can, so. which does make soldering it kind of interesting. So the only other thing left to do is I need to put some uh, header pins onto the back of the LCD.
Done. Right, I'll now go and program the uh, Atmega FPGA and we'll see if this works. All right, SDIS2 uh, in a neat little case that I did end up designing and building. This is again, early prototype, thingiverse later on, yada, yada, yada. Um, now, one thing I do have to mention about the S-Disk, which I find kind of annoying, is that it doesn't use DSK files like every other Apple II emulator on the planet. Uh, it uses a NIC file, NIC, but there is a utility available uh, to convert DSK to NIC. Uh, it's just a bit of a pain in the ass, um, but you can do it in bulk. So you can grab like a dozen DSK files and go thunk, and you end up with the appropriate NIC files. Anyway, so um, switch a configure for external drive, this plugged in, turn it on. Now, like a lot of floppy drive emulators on the 2C, the 2C is a bit too quick for it. Um, so it gives up trying to boot from a drive um, before this is ready, but uh, I can select, where are we, uh, Oregon, uh, load runner, let's just go with or, uh, Oregon Trail, right, Oregon Trail, uh, Apple Control Reset, Oregon Trail, awesome. So this is working really well, and obviously I can use it on other apples as well if I get uh, an adapter for the, um, or make an adapter for the DB connected to the 20 pin flat cape, uh, IEC, that, that one, Jesus. Um, but that works really well. Um, it's just a really simple device. It is just a floppy drive emulator. Nothing more, nothing less, doesn't do anything fancy. That's all it is. And there we go. My Apple IIc, my favorite of the Apple IIs, can now boot from an external device and has a modern floppy drive emulator, which makes this machine a lot, 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 lot more usable in the modern day. Um, but for now, that will pretty much do it. If you like the video, click like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Um, I will put links, like I said, to Thingiverse, um, and uh, I believe there's a really old GitHub repository for the S-Disk, if that interests you, um, and also to the big mess of wires uh, 2C switcher. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of happy. Uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, I am now on Patreon, just like these wonderful people just here. Uh, and that'll pretty much do it. And I'll see you in the next one.